People say that voting for the European Parliament in the UK is by proportional representation. That's a little misleading because the UK is one of six countries in the European Union that divides itself into regions with proportional representation applied separately in each region. In the UK, the regions vary from 3 to 10 seats. So if you're deciding how to vote, it's important to consider how many seats are up for grabs in your region. The number of seats, for instance, if you're, uh, if you're in the region with 10 seats and you want to vote for a party that's going to that it's safe to say is going to get at least one-tenth of the votes, then that's okay. You're safe. You can go ahead and vote for your favorite party, and uh, they'll get a seat, and your vote will count. If you are in the region with only three seats, and by the way, I'm talking about Great Britain, not Northern Ireland. Northern Ireland has voting a little bit different. So anyway... Um, if you're in the region, the Northeast, that has only three seats and you want to vote for a party that it's safe to say will get at least a third of the vote, that's fine. You can go ahead and vote for that party and your vote will count. If you want to vote for a party that will get less than one third of the votes, that's less certain. Um, if, if you vote for a party that will get fewer than one-sixth of the votes, then your vote probably will not count, and uh, that is to say your candidate is not likely, or nobody from your party is likely to get elected. So in your voting, consider how many seats there are for your region. Now, to get on with explaining proportional representation and the DeHaunt system, I'm going to do the DeHaunt system at the end, because, as I said, it's, um, it makes for quite a complicated explanation, a much more complicated explanation than you really need. So, the question that I want us to consider is, how many votes does a party need to get to get a seat? Now, for instance, if we have five seats up for grabs and there are 50,000 votes, how many votes does a party need? To get a seat? The answer is you can't say. You have to look at how the votes are distributed. Um, it's sort of an obvious guess. The, the only number you can calculate based on only having 50,000 votes for five seats is you would say, well, 50,000 divided by five, so 10,000 votes should be good for a seat. And it, it's true. Um, is true that any party that gets 10,000 votes will get a seat, but the exact number of seats, it's a little more complicated than that. So anyway, let's, let's see what happens, first of all, with that simple guess. Let's say the price of a seat is 10,000 votes. And we have these results. Party A has 16,000 votes, B has 13,000, C has 10,000, D has 7,000, E has 4,000. If the price of a seat is 10,000 votes, then party A, with 16,000 votes, they get one seat and they have 6,000 votes left over. Party B gets one seat and they have 3,000 votes left over. Party C has one seat. Party D with only 7,000 votes, they don't have enough votes to get a seat. And party E, even fewer, they don't have enough votes to get a seat. So there we go. Three seats awarded. But this is not the result that we're looking for. We want five seats. We want to award five seats. So we need to set the price of a seat lower than 10,000 votes. Well, what happens if we go to the worst party with only 4,000? What happens if we set the price of a seat at 4,000 votes? And party A 
With 16,000 votes, they'll get four seats. Party B, well, you need 12,000 votes for three seats, so they get three seats and they have 1,000 votes left over. Party C with 10,000, that's good for two seats, with 2,000 votes left over. Party D, 7,000 votes, so they can get a seat and have 3,000 left over. And E, they get a seat too. But that's too many seats. Now we've awarded 7, 8, 9, 10, 11 seats when there were only 5 seats available. So we've set the the price of a seat in votes to be too low. It has to be higher than 4,000 and lower than 10,000. So let's go in the middle. What happens if we set the price at 7,000 per seat? Well, this turns out to be kind of a lucky guess, but anyway, if because it's the right answer, but uh, if this didn't work out correctly, we, we could still keep narrowing down. Anyway, set the price at 7,000. Party A, with 16,000 votes, they can buy two seats. Party B can buy one seat, and they have 6,000 votes left over. Party C can buy one seat and have 3,000 votes left over. Party D has exactly enough for one seat. Party E, with only 4,000 votes, they do not get a seat. So we have awarded five seats. That's exactly what we wanted. There you go. So if you compare that to explanations of the de Haunt method, I think you'll find that the explanations of de Haunt are more complicated, but they end up with the same result. And the important thing, okay, here we have D has 7,000, A has more than double that, so A should get at least twice as many seats, and that's what happened here. Now I'll do the same thing again, the same example, but using the DeHaunt method. Using the DeHaunt method, and by the way, this is going to work out to the same result. Using the DeHaunt method, first we set the price of a seat at the highest number that we have here. So party A got the most votes, 16,000. So we'll start by setting the price of a seat at 16,000 votes. So party A gets a seat. Party A has one seat. Party A could buy two seats if the price comes down to 8,000. So anyway, what do we have so far? We've awarded one seat. We want to award five seats. So we have to bring the price down using the DeHaunt system. We bring the price down to the next number that will make a difference to results. Okay, so we need something lower than 16,000. It could be 8,000, 13,000, 10,000, 7,000, or 4,000. 13,000 is the highest of those numbers. So that's what we're going to do. We're going to bring the price down to 13,000. And that lets party B get a seat. Party B would be able to buy a second seat if the price comes down to 6,500. Okay, so we've awarded two seats so far. We want to award five. So we have to bring the price down a little more, below 13,000. What is the next number that would make a difference to results? Could be 8,000, 6,500, 10,000, 7,000, 4,000. Okay, 10,000 is the next number that will make a difference. We'll reduce the price of a seat to 10,000. So party C gets a seat. And party C will be able to get a second seat if the price comes down to 5,000. So we've awarded three seats. We want to award five. We have to keep going. What is the next number below 10,000 
that would change the number of seats we're awarding. Could be 8,000, 6,500, 5,000, 7,000, or 4,000. Well, 8,000 is the highest of those numbers. That's the one we'll use. We'll reduce the price to 8,000. 8,000 votes for a seat. So party A gets a second seat. And he has two seats. Or what price would they need to get three seats? That would be 5,333. We've awarded four seats. We have to award five. There's one more to go. We have to keep going. We will reduce the price from 8,000. What is the next number that would make a difference to results? It could be 5,333, 6,500, 5,000, or 7,000, or 4,000. The next number that would make a difference to results is 7,000. We'll reduce the price of a seat to 7,000 votes, and that lets party D get a seat. And we can stop there because we've awarded five seats. So that's, um, well, I think that's a little better explanation of the DeHaunt system than I've seen other people do. Um, and it gives you a, a really methodical way of finding the best res best result compared with what I did before, which worked pretty well. Although, it, to be honest, it's uh, a little bit of guesswork. Um, what's important about the DeHaunt system is that it gives you a sequence. Now, this is not important for the British seats in the European Parliament. All that matters is uh, the number of seats awarded within each region to each party. But in the Northern Ireland Assembly, they use the DeHaunt system, and this sequence is important in, I think it's for awarding cabinet seats. But anyway, um, so that's proportional representation, and that's why if you are in a region with a small number of seats, you want to be aware of how likely it is that your favorite party is going to get enough votes to have a seat. And if you're in a if you're in a region with uh, with more seats, it's not such an issue. Let's do an example with real numbers. These are numbers from the 2014 election to the European Parliament. Scotland is one region of the UK in, in the European Parliament. And this is how the votes were distributed. There were nine parties for six seats. Okay, well, first of all, only the top six have a chance of getting a seat, so let's just leave out number seven, eight, nine, first of all. So how many votes do you need per seat? In sixth place were the Liberal Democrats with 95,319. So what happens if we say the price of a seat is 95,319 votes. Okay, then all six of these will get a seat. But look at this. Conservative, Labour, and Scottish National Party all have more than double the Liberal Democrats. So they will all get at least two seats, and we need nine seats in total. This is not going to work. If we give the Liberal Democrats a seat, we have to have at least nine seats to award, and we don't have that, so... Sorry, Lib Dems, you cannot have a seat. What about the Greens? The Greens have 108,305. What if we set that as the price of the seat? Well, that's not much different from what we already had. Once again, Conservative, Labour, Scottish National Party all have more than double the Greens. So if we let the Greens have a seat, then awarding seats in proportion, Conservative, Labour, and SNP have to get two seats each at least. 
and UKIP gets a seat that's eight seats but there are only six seats available so sorry Green Party you cannot have a seat so now in last place of the remaining contenders is UKIP with 140,534 votes what happens if we say the price of a seat is 140,534 in this case UKIP will get one seat Conservative have more than UKIP but less than double UKIP so they will get one seat also Labour has more than double but less than triple UKIP so they would get two seats and Scottish National Party they also are more than double this price but less than triple so they would get two seats also so in total that awards six seats and we are done at least that's for Scotland now Green and Lib Dem didn't get any seats here nationally in the UK Green had 7.7% of the vote and got three seats for that. Lib Dem had 6.7% and got only one seat. Now, if this were really proportional representation, there shouldn't be such a big difference here. Green shouldn't be getting triple the number of seats as the Lib Dems when they only have a, a small increase in the share of the voting. And this happens, you get these weird results because the UK is split into regions with proportional representation applied separately in each region. The UK in total has 73 seats and if we were awarding seats in proportion based on this percentage of the vote then Green should have had five seats and the Lib Dems should have had four seats but when the uh, when the country is split into regions with a small number of seats per region the lower rated parties lose out so this is why it's important in your voting to consider how likely it is that your your favorite party is going to get a seat in your region. If you are in the region with only three seats and your favorite party doesn't have a chance of finishing in the top three, then I'm afraid you have to think of voting for someone else. Vote for someone in the top three who has a chance to win. Uh, if you're if you're in the region with 10 seats well that's a lot easier um, if you vote for a party that will get more than one tenth of the vote then your party is guaranteed to get at least one seat your vote will count um, yes so that's the main thing consider how many seats there are for your region.